So what exactly is momentum? Well, the momentum of an object is given by taking the mass of that object in kilograms and multiplying by the velocity of that object in meters per second. So momentum is given by a lowercase letter p. And just like velocity, momentum is a vector. It has both magnitude as well as direction. Now, momentum is a vector which points in the same direction direction as velocity. So, momentum vector always points in the same direction as the velocity vector. Now, if we want to calculate the magnitude of momentum, we simply take the magnitude of velocity and multiply it by the mass of that object. Now, the units of momentum are simply kilograms multiplied by meters per second. Now, what exactly is the rate of change of momentum? Let's suppose we want to take the rate of change of momentum, which is equivalent to taking the derivative of the momentum function. So our derivative of momentum function is equal to infinitely small change of momentum divided by infinitely small change in time. Now, let's replace momentum with m times v. That's exactly what we do in the second step. So now notice the mass, which is a constant, we can take that out and we get the mass multiplied by the rate of change of velocity function with respect to time. And recall, by definition, the rate of change of velocity with respect to time is simply our instantaneous acceleration of that object. So we see that the rate of change of momentum is equal to mass times instantaneous acceleration, which by the second law of motion is equal to the sum of all the forces acting on our object. So the net force applied on our object. So from this result, we see the following important statement. The rate of change of momentum is equal to the net force that acts on our object. So let's look at one application of this uh, equation. Let's suppose that a tennis player's racket is in contact with a 0.1 kilogram tennis ball for 5 milliseconds. Now, if the ball leaves the racket with a velocity of 150 kilometers an hour, let's calculate the average net force acting on the ball using this equation. So note we're going to approximate in this example. So as long as we choose a very small time interval, which in this case is very small, it's 5 milliseconds, we can approximate the net force using the following equation. The change in momentum divided by a very small change in time is approximately equal to the average net force acting on the object, our tennis ball. So we can replace the change in momentum with the following formula, mass times change in velocity divided by a very small change in time. So the change in time is equal to t final minus t initial, where t initial is 0 seconds and t final is 5 milliseconds or 0 0.005 seconds. Now the mass is given to be 0 0.1 kilograms, our v final we have to convert from kilometers an hour to meters per second, which we'll do in just a moment, and the v initial is assumed to be zero meters per second. So, let's convert 150 kilometers an hour to meters per second by multiplying it by 1,000 uh, divided by 3,600. So we have hours times meters divided by kilometers uh, times seconds. So kilometers cancel, hours cancel, and we're left with approximately 41.7 meters per second is our final velocity. So we plug these values into our equation, we multiply, and we get 834 newtons. So the average net force acting on our object, on the ball by the racket, has this magnitude. And we found it using our momentum or rate of change of momentum.